Hey guys, welcome to the Breakout Podcast. My name is Madeline, and today I have Callahan Hafner with us. He's going to be telling us a bit about his brand new clothing company and his journey to get there. Thanks, Maddie, for having me. I really appreciate it. I'm super excited for today. Of course. So can you share us a bit about the story and the inspiration behind developing this company? So I was an athlete my entire life. I played volleyball. I felt like I wanted to play pro volleyball at the end of my collegiate career. That was kind of the path I was going toward. I didn't really have many motivations in life other than that. Um, my senior year of high school, my leg basically deteriorated. I got surgery and then I played a little bit after, but I realized that I needed to stop. Um, so I went to another, I got like my 10th opinion on, um, doctors and he told me that I had a chronic leg condition and that this is probably not going to work out. So I medically retired from volleyball. Um, I came home after my first semester, my freshman year, um, playing college. And I realized that a lot of people have up and downs, but I was at a really down trajectory for a long period of time. And I realized that it's okay to not be okay. And there were a lot of people like myself going through similar situations, maybe not necessarily those who had injuries, but other people have life instances, um, et cetera, that happen. And they don't have a support system to back them. So I was in my college marketing class um, at ACC when I transferred back. And I we were doing like mock um, business plans, businesses, et cetera. And um, it was like a two-week project. And I realized I doesn't just have to be a mock. Like, why can't I just make it a real thing? Why can't I make it happen? So after the steps of actually publishing it to my professor and stuff, I made... Um, I made the moves to start making it like I formed my, my own LLC, made the actual tangible steps to become a certified business collecting sales tax in the state of Texas. But at the center of it, the bread and butter was that I had to promote something I was passionate about other than just the product. Obviously, I'm really passionate about mental health because of my own experiences and those who maybe don't have um, the motivation to talk about what they're going through right now because they have fear of um, losing certain statuses, losing friends, etc. So that was kind of the central theme of me starting this brand um, because of my own experiences and because I want to advocate for those who might not feel like they're in the place to do so right now. That's so amazing. Yeah, like we went to elementary school together and I remember yes. you always leaving class for volleyball. Um, yes. That's crazy that that happened. But, you know, so many people let those sports injuries just hold them back. So yes. that's crazy that you decided to use that as your benefit and push forward with it. Mm -hmm. I'm glad too. It took a while, but glad to finally be here. Yeah. So how do you integrate mental health awareness into the designs of, and messages of your clothing line? So in terms of the messaging versus the designs, I'll tackle the messaging first. So on my company website, I kind of have the layout of in the about a section of why I started it, um, the messaging behind that, what I'm contributing a portion of my profits to, et cetera, toward local and national mental health charities. But um, central to the brand, I'm I make it really known that I want to be authentic as possible and I want it to be more than just clothing. There's way more that goes beyond that. If I'm contributing value to people's wardrobes, that's awesome. That's not the central theme of why I started a business. It's because I want to make the difficult conversations become more seamless, become more of an occurrence in society because I realized that once someone brings up mental health in a conversation, usually the conversation lasts about 10 seconds or less. If I can be, if through this business or through advocacy in general, if we can elongate those conversations and talk about things that really matter and be proactive and tackle those challenges, good things are going to result out of that. So that's kind of the messaging of this brand is that through this, we are able to contribute to companies who have a tangible action plan. I'm all for 
the infographics on Instagram, the awareness. But if we don't tackle the challenge directly and don't have action plans, then funds are honestly being misallocated. They're not being allocated correctly. In terms of, sorry, that was a long tangent, but in terms of the design aspect now, it's, um, I, I, I don't make, the manufacturer makes, I need to make that clear. Um, French Terry Tribend, Triblend fabrics. Um, so all of my sweatshirts are French Terry and Triblend. So it has polyester cotton rayon. Um, those are the three. You see it in like Aviator Nation, Viore, like the Triblend is as nice as I wanted it to get. And so building it with the utmost quality was something that was really important to me because in life, you can't do anything just um, half as good as you would like to. You need to go all in or, or you need to wait and think about it for a little bit. So that's about it on the designing part. But on the front pocket is uh, Australian Sunset Gradient. Um, funny enough, I almost named the brand Australian Sunset instead of Sunset on 6th. But the reason why I have an Australian Sunset Five Strike Gradient is because Australia, it's in the other part of the world. They get to see the same beautiful sunsets that we do, maybe in a different light. Um, but just to know that opposite ends of the world, wherever you are in the world, um, there's always a sunset to look forward to. There's always something in life to look forward to. It's going to suck it sometimes. It's going to get dark. It's going to get really cloudy. But if you can see the light at the end of the tunnel, that'll be motivation to help your friends and help yourself to succeed and take care of yourself. That's amazing. So you put a lot of thought and effort into the design and the hopefully the outcome of this product and the message behind yes. it. Did you have any hesitation when creating the company at all? Were you going back and forth or were you just like, I'm going to go all in? I definitely did have some hesitation. It's been like, uh, I think now 14 month process. And in the first six months, I was like, do I really want to allocate what I've earned? Because before this, I was a DoorDash driver. Uh, my senior year of high school, like I was a barista. I coached club volleyball. I coached this and that. I had various side hustles. And that was a lot of harder income that I was putting on the line. So I think more of the education, the hesitation was on the financial aspect, but I realized that if I care so much about some costs, then I shouldn't be a business owner. Some costs are important, but if they create value long-term, if they create um, social value, like mental health, mental health advocacy long-term, then I'm all for it. So my main hesitation to answer your question was the financial aspect, but I realized that putting funds into greatness um, is something that's really exciting to be a business owner. And I'm really excited that I took that step. That's so crazy and cool. So did you have to learn a lot of skills when you first started this business? Like, did you make your own website or learn any SEO marketing that you've still had to implement? On the marketing aspect, yes, it's been, um, so I hired a third party Shopify. I'm sure you're familiar with it. They help you make the website and everything. It seems pretty seamless. There is a creative aspect to it, but in terms of the marketing analytics, I did have to learn a lot about that, read a lot of articles about that, that didn't realize how much you have to pay to gain viewership, gain attention toward your website. So definitely skills in terms of marketing and outreach. I had zero experience on that. So I had to learn a lot about that. In terms of the creative aspects, I was notoriously, I have, I'm notoriously really bad at art. Um, I remember even when we were in elementary school, I would have the worst painting at the end of the period. And that was a real battle knowing that I wanted to make clothing, but I had zero creative abilities. So it takes me longer to make to make clothing that's not ugly, to say the least. Um, mm -hmm. To make clothing that has artistic value to it. it takes me a little bit longer, but I have learned what are some certain things that my target market finds useful in clothing and provides value. 
And for me, it took a lot of research, um, ironically enough. I know research and the arts don't really go hand in hand, but it's something I had to do to compensate for my lack of artistic ability. So I had to research certain things that um, would be helpful in putting on and leaving off of the sweatshirt because less is more. That's a big philosophy I have. But yes, I learned a lot of things in terms of marketing analytics, data analytics, outreach, and then at the end of the day, making the product for sure. That's incredible. What strategies have you employed to build a brand that resonates with individuals facing mental health challenges? I don't have too many unorthodox outside the box strategies, but the main strategy I have is definitely authenticity because tackling a subject as sensitive as mental health, as it might be for some people, you have to be 100% authentic. So if people come up to me, ask questions to me about my brand, potentially even like the financials, ask me questions about where I see myself long-term, where I see this brand long-term, or even just flipping the subject, what I think about mental health legislation in the Senate. What do I think about the mental health infrastructure in NCAA athletics? Like I have to give my full and honest opinion. I cannot sugarcoat anything as an individual because that'll be translated to me sugarcoating a really big topic for a business. And since mental health advocacy is the central theme of this business, I can't sugarcoat topics that people bring to me because that'll seem um, disingenuous for the business in general. Yeah, I completely agree with you on that. You know, like I'm a big advocate for the troubled teen industry right now and also for addiction recovery Um, and sugarcoating it. It just takes away the entire purpose of everything. It's like, what am I doing if I'm not speaking up about it? Um, Like just yesterday, I had that instance where I saw someone post something on social media and I commented on it and I had that debate in my mind. I was like, do I say something about this? Um, Right. But it's always makes your soul feel better when you are being truthful about those things. Yes. 100%. I'm glad you got to take that step because it's definitely a big internal battle. Like, do I bring up the sensitive topic or do I not? But if you bring it up, um, there's nothing bad that can result out of it. So that's the main thing that I was kind of battling with 18 months ago. I'm like, am I going to tackle a subject that's sensitive? Then at the end of the day, it's worth it for sure. Yeah. And it's becoming more normalized now. So it's not as hard to speak up about it as it would be like 20 years ago. But it's also at the stage where we still need to do more about it. Right. For sure. Have you faced any challenges or pushbacks in the fashion industry focusing on mental health and designs? I haven't necessarily faced too much pushback. I guess a more market pushback would be the lack of outreach. I've been able to achieve but again i'm a small business um growing steadily so i'm a big believer in short-term investments um that are not super crazy they generate long-term growth um i'm i know that you're into investing so if one puts all their assets into like this crazy nuanced bitcoin not necessarily bitcoin let's say like this weird I guess I don't want to describe it as weird either. This pretty nuanced cryptocurrency, like we put all our assets into that. Obviously, we're that's pretty much a formula to lose all our money. Um, that's kind of the path I had to take with this business, knowing that I've laid the framework and groundwork for almost years now to the point where I have to know that it's going to generate a long-term growth in the future. And if I do the short tangible steps to get there. So I haven't necessarily faced pushback because it's mental health is kind of a one. I wouldn't say a one-sided conversation, but you're going to not have too many people openly against you because at the end of the day, those who are against are likely facing those battles as well and are trying to cope in some mechanism to make it seem like they're strong they're powerful, nothing's going wrong with them. 
So to answer your question, I haven't really received pushback or anything along those lines. Um, it's more so um, myself still encouraging myself every day to make the small steps to become successful and not necessarily just stopping because this month didn't do well or this month I could have done better. It's small growth um, will generate long term stability. Yeah, small growth definitely generates long term stability. You just have to be consistent. Like that's what I've heard from everyone yes. is just consistency, you know? It's either yes. like you start a business and it's really easy at the beginning and hard at the end, or it's really hard at the beginning and easy at the end. But either way either way you have to be consistent is what I've heard. For sure. Just um, like all the TikTok content creators, they have to post Day, daily, daily, daily. Um, they skip a day, they're losing thousands of dollars in revenue. So I did mm -hmm. make it um, seem like that. So I'm That's encouraged good. to maintain the presence. So, what steps do you take to ensure that your company promotes mental health advocacy? Advocacy just beyond selling clothes. Some steps that we take is would definitely be involved in community. So for example, I helped sponsor a walk called Straight for Life at Westlake High School the other day. Um, and the main central theme of that walk was to prevent suicide, both at Westlake and nationally. Half of the proceeds went to national mental health organizations and half of it went back into Westlake, the counseling department, because um, to be frank, we're losing too many people in our community. And we need to do everything we can to make sure that our kids, our parents are protected as well. So that was something that was fun. That was like a little stepping stone, like the first kind of event, community involvement event that I was able to help contribute to. That was really exciting. So it's kind of steps like those. Since we're such a new business, we don't have too many uh, milestones accomplished but that was kind of the first big one a couple weeks ago because we launched the website early february so it hasn't been too long it's been like six seven weeks but in terms of community involvement that's super important that's something i want to see expand for sunset on six so that was the first piece in it i would love to do more like that i would love to do things in the austin local area because as we know it's there's a huge homelessness problem, and with homelessness comes mental health addiction issues, unfortunately. So if I can help in any way through the brand of having a group of people come and support those who need it the most, that would be awesome. So I don't have many steps to answer your question at the moment, but um, creating opportunities to have community involvement and provide social value is something that's really important that I'm really excited to expand on. Yeah, providing social value is, is definitely a very important step to all of it. Um, mm -hmm. So in what ways do you prioritize mental health with your employees? Or is it just you in the workspace right now? It's just me right now. But I guess in terms of supply chain logistics, I hired a manufacturing company. Um, and part of the reason why the sweatshirts are not cheap, to say the least, is because the cost of goods to manufacture, to manufacture are not cheap as well, because they're paying their manufacturing employees well. Um, everything's handmade. Everything's ethically sourced. It's all made in Los Angeles, California. Um, the same manufacturers as Aviator Nation and Viore. So those are really high quality brands that have really good ethical images in the field of clothing and retail and fashion. So I don't have employees, unfortunately. That would be so awesome. Um, I don't have the budget for that at the moment. But in terms of the manufacturing companies I'm working with, um, like creating the product, I needed to make sure that that labor was ethically sourced. Um, again, kind of the concept of going big or going home, if there's a little tweak, um, I know I'm not trying to out brands or anything like along those lines, but I know Sheen, for example, the um, very big online, they run out of multiple locations, but it was uncovered the other day that there are instances of child labor 
um, along those lines. And although they had success, you mentioned this earlier in the podcast that you can either have a lot of success in the beginning and kind of dwindle down and have problems, or you can do it building up. I'm choosing to build up, um, getting a lot of products capital in the beginning can seem, can seem great, but often there's red flags such as child labor at the extreme level. Um, so it's really important in terms of the supply chain that all workers involved have a good wage, they're treated well, and they have opportunities to provide for themselves and in some case others. Yes. Yeah, that's really, really cool that you're just specializing in all of this in the mental health field. You know, it's a really crazy story of what's happened to you and what you're doing now. And it's amazing to see you doing this. I absolutely love it. Thank you. Um, so how do you see your clothing company evolving in the next few years? That is a good question because I'm actually going back to school in June. Um, so I'll have to relocate there. Um, I'm going to Arizona. I'm going to Grand Canyon University right by Arizona State. I think it's five miles away. But anyhow, I hope to see myself expand in terms of, yes, sales, numbers, inventory count. It matters, but that's not the central theme of the brand's existence. I hope to create change for someone. If it helps one person, then I did my job at the end of the day. So that's kind of the direction I want to take the brand. I want to continue doing these community involvement events. I want to potentially host a community involvement event. I think that would be long-term down the road because obviously it is expensive to set up and everything. Um, but at the end of the day, I want to give back, especially toward athletes. Um, that's something that's in the website. I was a college athlete myself. I'm not going to go too in-depth um, for PC reasons about um everything that happened but ultimately i want to make sure that um everyone has opportunity to provide for themselves and take time for themselves ultimately yeah taking time for yourself is definitely very important you know it's so underrated nowadays to be taking time for yourself in the society we're in it's always just go 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 yes Hundred percent. No downtime, no sleep, but it's a choice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to other young entrepreneurs looking to start a business with a focus on social impact? I would say that if you don't have an underlying reason for social change or for creating valuable change in your community, I wouldn't even start it. Ultimately, you need to have an underlying reason for the brand's existence because people are so caught up nowadays with um i see a lot of like drop shipping creators on social media and they're just focused on bringing in revenue and that's awesome but that's not sustainable long term unless they create social value in what they do so you need to help others around you by what you provide with your products or services you can't just focus on the financials how much it costs the balance sheet, although that's really, really important, I'm not going to act like finances don't matter. The underlying reason and value and ethics of the company matter even more because if you don't have that, you're not going to have sustainable long-term growth. So that's my advice to young entrepreneurs. Get the social, ethical, like what are you starting the brand for? That needs to be written down that's in my business plan that's in my spot analysis of what what you need to do and how you're going to create value and before you do the financials mm -hmm. yeah value is underrated i think i know what yeah. you're talking about there's so many drop shippers out there nowadays yes. and people are like oh i made 100k in my first year or like my first week or my first month and it's like right. are you feeling fulfilled on the inside you know like right. having a company like yours where you're feeling fulfilled like walking away you might not be making a bunch of money yet but it's like you still feel fulfilled and like yes. you're doing something 100 percent. and no hate toward the drop shippers they're awesome if they provide value a lot do 
Mm -hmm. um, they're able to get those products in their markets and then sell them for a little bit of an ups upcharge. But um, yeah, that's not something I necessarily be interested in. And I hope I'm not sounding mean by name dropping drop shippers and stuff. Uh, I'm sure a lot of them are awesome individuals, but just the um, value that's created through doing something that you love and that you have complete control of and your products and your services having control over that that creates value in itself and you're able to tell and cultivate your own story versus someone else's products that you're trying to i wouldn't necessarily appropriate but you're trying to connect to something that's not your own and that would be a really big challenge so if droppers drop shippers have connections to other things that they have value in at the end of the day it's all about value what can you connect to is it authentic if it's not i'd steer away find authenticity before you go down the deep end yeah most definitely so as a last question i ask everyone this in my podcast okay. how do you find success that's a really good question i have two answers for you one is like a textbook definition that I actually just studied last week in my Principles of Finance and Investments class, and then I'll give you my own. So the textbook definition, I've said this over and over in the podcast because I feel like what I've learned in school, I'm trying to make it now um, in my daily lexicon. So defining success from like a textbook academic perspective would have to be along the lines of creating value. Um, I've said that over and over in this podcast, but creating value and sorry, I'm trying to think of the definition. If I don't remember it, I'll paraphrase, but creating value so that you yourself feel fulfilled and that um, it creates a positive impact on other people. So the value I created was Yes, my products, but I'm also trying to create value through having those tough conversations once again with close friends, family members, et cetera. And yes, it's really important that you don't just look at the financials. Again, don't ignore them. They're super important. I'm studying finance right now at the end of the day. So it's really ironic that I'm saying this, but you need to find success and find value in things that are not necessarily numbers. So. That's my tidbit, um, but my personal um, definition of success is having no regrets. And that might sound a little bit controversial at the forefront because we all have regrets at the end of the day. But if you failed, um, you can still have success. Like when you failed, did you learn from that? What did you do next time to make sure that didn't happen? Because it's all about a learning experience at the end of the day. Being a business owner, it is not, it's not unicorns and rainbows. It's tough at the end of the day. A lot of tears are shed. Um, a lot of money is invested in something that you don't know if you're going to get a return on in the short term. That can be hard. But having those sunk costs, having, having those sunk costs that maybe you haven't seen a return on yet, Having that money on product inventory that didn't sell right away, having failed marketing and ad campaigns like myself I've had, I've been able to create success by learning from that. And if you told me 18 months ago that I know all about starting a business, maintaining it, and having customer outreach, I would probably laugh at you. Um, so I feel like success is found I've found success by learning. It's been a really weird type of learning because I'm sure, as you know, when we're taught in school to learn, it's just put your head down, put your head down, look at the textbook, listen to lectures, and then just regurgitate everything on a test or an exam. Um, this has been different because it's situational based. So finding success, um, in my point of view, has been from learning through this opportunity. It's so crazy how far you've come. I just want to say that. Like, it's, oh, thank it's you. amazing how you took such a negative situation that you went through and not to like 
woo me you but um <laughs> it's so incredible how you took that situation and then you turned it into this positive and you're just going with it like you're just you're able to just continuously work hard towards this goal oh thanks so much it means the world yes no, no one should ever quit we're all going to be at rock bottom but don't mean to cliche be cliche but yeah you're rock bottom you can't get even lower than that it's always you're constantly improving at your lowest mm -hmm. lows at the end of the day i agree with you well thank you so much for joining us today i really well, appreciate your time callahan thanks so much for having me this was a blast and um uh, yeah, thanks so much for what you do and amplifying small business owners, um, opinions, voices, and all that it means so much to people like me. And yeah, you're killing it. Props to you for starting all this, this podcast. I can never, I'm not good at tech, so. It's hard with podcasts because it's like you're on camera too. So it's yes. kind of adds a little bit of anxiety to it. It's like you're constantly having to think about what your next words are. Fair enough. <laughs> Yeah, good thing we were Zoom trained, junior, sophomore year of high school. So mm -hmm. Yep, we both were for sure. <laughs> Do you have any last words for anyone? Not necessarily, but along the lines of being your own entrepreneur, it feels weird to call myself an entrepreneur because at the end of the day, I just try to create change and make sweatshirts. Um, I hope that doesn't sound disingenuous to myself, but. Being an entrepreneur, it's hard, but you should do it. Um, I feel, I wish, like at Westlake, for example, I took that business incubator class. So many people I know have had exponential career opportunities after doing that because they have business experience no one else can relate to. So I am forever grateful for this. I think I stepped on the opportunity a little bit too late at the end of the day so continue to find um value creation that you want to see and if you see an opportunity think about it months has to be months can't just be a couple of days um draft something and then start it because life's too short just to wait and wait and wait um yeah security is awesome financial security is awesome working for a firm getting nice benefits that is awesome at the end of the day. But if you're young, you have to be a go-getter if you want um, to live the lifestyle that you want when you're older. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. You know, it's all about the hustle when you're young, bro. So it's never too late to start something. Percent. Yes. Couldn't have said it better. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you, Maddie. You're the best.